Hello and welcome to the 140 k Imperial Guard Tactics video. Now before we get into today's video, I would like to say a big thank you to Annabelle Gonzalez Oyaki for sending in some awesome pictures of his Mordian Stormtroopers. These are the old school badass Kazakhin models and they look absolutely fantastic. I really like the sort of armor that then contrasts with the bright guns. I think it looks really cool, really stunning on the battlefield and a great way of getting that sort of Mordian vibe across on your tactical Kazakhin model. So absolutely fantastic. Thank you for sending these pictures in. If anyone else has got any cool pictures they want me to use in my videos, please post them on my Facebook page or email them to me. And there's links and emails down in the description below. So go and check those out. But without further ado, let's get into today's video. So today guys, I want to look at Forge World Flyers. We've been doing a bit of a deep dive on the old Forge World recently. I have to say, I am absolutely loving it. My wallet is quaking in its boots because now I want heavy mortars, I want a Macarius, and after having a game of Aeronautica Imperialis last week, COVID safe, in the garden, I am now really wanting to get a Forge World Flyer for my Imperial Guard. But me being me, I can't just trod, I can't tread the well-trodden path I can't just go and get a vulture and find somewhere to get some punch accounts and strap them together. I can't do that. That's too boring. That's too mainstream. I need to go for something wacky and weird. I want to go for one of the crazy fighter planes that Forge World has available for, for the Imperial Guard. So I am going to be looking at day the sort of top three, the three quintessential Forge World flyers. And we're going to be looking, are they any good? Or are they over-costed, over-priced, over-pointed resin bricks? Well, first thing to say is they are cool. They are damn cool. Okay, I re I think that some of the Forge Flyers, I would say all the Forge Flyers are some of the coolest models that you can get for, for your Imperial Guard. I think they're amazing. In fact, I'm surprised I hadn't really looked at them closer before. And the three that we're going to be looking at today, guys, is we're going to be looking at the Avenger Strike Fighter, the Thunderbolt, and the Voss Pattern Lightning. Those are the three we're going to look at. We're not looking at the Marauder Heavy Destroyer today, guys. I'll be doing a separate video on that at some point in the future. So, let's go through and let's start with the Thunderbolt first. So, the Thunderbolt is a heavy fighter. And it's, it's actually... Probably aesthetically from its looks my favorite one of all the fighters. I think it just looks so Guard so Imperium It just looks so cool and It comes it is a pricey beast though. It is a pricey beast. So Standard your Thunderbolt will set you back 210 points, but you can for 20 points add in the Thunderbolt Hellstrike Rack, which basically gives it some extra guns. As standard, it comes with the Thunderbolt Nose Auto Cannons, and it comes with Thunderbolt Twin Laz Cannons, and then like I said, you can add these missile racks on. So between 210 and 230 points. For that, what do you get? Well, you get your standard Airborne, Explodes, Hard to Hit, and Supersonic. You get all that stuff. Now, the Thunderbolt can move between 20 and 45 inches. It can't hover. It's not, a, it's not a Valkyrie. It's not a VTOL thing. It's not a gunship. It is a plane. So it can't hover. So that's the first thing to be aware of. If you're used to using Valkyries, these planes, they don't op operate the same way. Now, it does move between 20 and 45 uh, inches. Uh, it's weapon skill 6 plus, of course. Blizzard skill 4 plus, but remember now with the new rules, uh, moving and shooting with vehicles, there's no penalty. So it's not like it's a 4 plus and then it hits on a 5 plus if it moves. Nope, it just always hits on a 4 plus. Uh, it's strength 6, it's toughness 7, which that's what marks it as one of the heavy fighters because the other two are only toughness 6. But it does have 15 wounds. That toughness 7 and that 15 wounds does make it quite nice, quite durable. I mean, bear in mind... If you look at what this this vehicle has to offer, it's got minus one to hit, and it's got 15 wounds, and it's just a seven. So it's more durable than a Valkyrie, because it's got that extra wound. But it also has more firepower. Now, what do you get? Let's look at the firepower then. What do you get for your firepower? Now, the Thunderbolt Nose Auto Cannon has a range of 48 inches, standard auto cannon range. It's got strength 7, AP minus 1, damage 2. 
standard auto cannon so far, but it is heavy eight. So you're getting a lot of DACA. You're getting a lot of DACA from that plane, which is nice. It's also got the Thunderbolt Twin Laz Cannon, which is a standard Laz Cannon affair. Now, if you there, I feel personally for 210 points, that's not enough firepower. I think with the with the Thunderbolt, you almost want to add in the missile racks because yes, it is 20 more points, but 20 more points on top of an already 210 point model isn't as much of a bigger deal. You you uh you want it to do damage. You, know, you want it to do firepower. So the health rack missile rack give you an additional. Two shots, strength eight, AP minus two, with D6 plus two damage. So quite reliable. So when you add those health strike rockets on, what you have from this vehicle is essentially 12 anti-vehicle shots. Because the auto cannons are definitely anti-vehicle. Um, the the health strike rockets are anti-vehicle. The twin last cannons are anti-vehicle. Obviously, you can argue the auto cannons are a bit of a, a take all comers, but heavy, if you look at sort of Heavy bolters versus auto cannons. Heavy bolters are definitely more of an anti-infantry weapon, and auto cannons are more of an anti-tank weapon or anti-heavy. That sort of auto cannons are anti-medium and above. So it's definitely this thing is quite good at taking out, um, at taking out medium vehicles. So that's quite nice. However, I've kind of bigged the Thunderbolt up. I'll be honest with you, I think it's too expensive. I think it is too expensive. Um, I think what it's suffering from is the fact that it's got auto cannons and Games Workshop for some reason. I mean, look at the exterminator, the Lehman exterminator. That thing has always been a pretty mediocre version of the Lehman Russ. And there are some ways, thanks to Psychic Awakening, that you can boost it up, but by and large, it's still a bit poo. Yet because it has auto cannons, because of that flat damage too, Games Workshop for some reason has decided to make it one of the most expensive Lehman Russ variants which has basically consigned it to the dustbin. And it's a little bit the same with the Thunderbolt. Looks great, and the firepower it has is impressive. I'm just not sure it's worth its 230 points when you go all out on it. Although, you know, especially when you consider that it doesn't have strafing run, it isn't hitting on threes, it's only hitting on fours. Um, I mean, you can use a master of the fleet to try and help it reroll ones, but that can be difficult with his aura. So it is a tricky one. I mean, I'm looking at its data sheet now, guys, and please, someone correct me if I'm wrong. I'm looking at its data sheet. I see special rules, airborne. I see explodes. I see hard to hit, and I see supersonic. I don't see strafing run or anything like that. I don't, surprisingly, because it is, a, even though it's a, a sort of air superiority fighter, it's a heavy fighter, I suppose it's a bit of a catch-all fighter, but I don't see it having any buffs for shooting other flyers, so it would actually suffer minus one for shooting down other flyers, which is a shame because the loadout it's got actually makes it quite interesting as an anti-fighter plane because it's got all the it's got. I think if it was an anti-fighter plane, it could do quite well because most fighters do tend to be quite flimsy, so um, you could definitely you know most a lot of Eldar fighters, fighters for example, are tough as six. Whereas this thing is fighting Eldar fighters, I think it's got a real good chance of just of destroying them but it's just a shame that it will be hitting on fives and if you know other fighters that shoot at it especially elder ones won't be hitting on that disadvantage because uh, uh yeah they've got very good ballistic skill so it's a bit of an interesting one i think unfortunately it's it's pretty durable with good firepower maybe slightly overcosted. i think realistically this thing needs to be at most 200 points but even then i think it needs to be more like 195 to 190 but I could be being a little too generous there, but it definitely needs a points decrease. The other one we're going to look at is, so we've looked at the most expensive version. Now let's look at the cheapest flyer that you can get your hands on. And that is the Voss Pattern Lightning. Okay, now as standard, no upgrades. This vehicle, this plane, clocks in at a mere 130 points. That is a bloody bargain. 130 points to slap some armor on the field, which has got firepower on it. But what do you get for your 130 points? Okay, well again, you get airborne, you get explode, you get hard to hit, you get supersonic, but you don't get any anything for targeting other planes. So that's, yeah, that's kind of interesting. 
I mean, I'm just going to read through these airborne. So, because if I made a boom and stuff, airborne, this model cannot charge, can only be charged with units that have fly, can only attack or be attacked with fire units that fly. Explodes, obviously, explodes. Hard to hit your first track to one when shooting in phase. Supersonic, each time it moves, first pivot it at 90 degrees, then move straight forward, note that I cannot pivot again. Yeah, so there's nothing here that says. That says you get extra bonuses for shooting down fighters, which is really unusual. And unless my source here is being particularly unreliable, that is a shame for what is essentially, which is definite, what is definitely an S superiority fighter. Now, for your 130 points, you get 20 to 45 inch movement, blizzard skill 4 plus, strength 6, only toughness 6, so less tough than a Valkyrie, less tough than a Thunderbolt. You still get the 14 wounds though, and you still get a 3 plus save. All, all these fighters have got a 3 plus save. So it's got a, you know, it's only, it's one less wound, one less toughness. Uh, but the problem is, is it only comes with two LAS cannons. That's it. Nothing else. Two laser cannons. So 130 points for two LAS cannons. Two durable LAS cannons. Mm, I mean, how much is it for two armor sentinels these days with LAS cannons for like 100 points? I believe it's 100 points for two sentinels with, uh, our sentinels with last cannons. So for 30 points more, you'll get two extra wounds than an armored sentinel, and minus one to hit. So when you put it like that, it's not too bad. When you put it like that, now, or you could give it the Hellstrike missile rack, which makes it 150 points, and that adds in for 150 points that adds in an additional heavy two strength eight ape minus two d6 plus two damage so actually they're better than regular crack missiles so for 150 points you can take one vast voss pattern lightning which will be the same as three armor sentinels with las cannons and you know roughly the same and it will have Two more, I have one more shot than them, and it's lightning. Uh, Hellstrike rack has more reliable damage, and the only disadvantage you've got there is that it would have four less wounds, but it would be minus one to hit. So that's interesting. Next time you're considering your sentinels, next time you're considering taking three armor sentinels, you could consider taking the boss pattern lightning. You know, it's not it's not a bad choice at all. It's just very cheap. Um, I mean, it's less than a Lehman Russ. Well, it's about the price of a bog standard Lehman Russ. So, there you go. I think the problem with it, if I'm going to be honest, is not a high rate of fire. So, unlike the Thunderbolt, which can be can take on anything, this is very much dedicated to anti-tank and anti-very, very heavy infantry. Whereas the Thunderbolt had those auto cannons uh so it could it could have uh, a good chance against any target it had a decent rate of fire i mean the, the thunderbolt literally has three times the rate of fire of of the voss pattern lightning four shots versus 12 shots so i guess you get what you pay for 80 more points for that thunderbolt though interesting now the last one we're going to look at is the Avenger Strike Fighter. And this is probably, this is the most interesting. Okay, this is the most interesting. So it's 165 points. It's the Goldilocks. It's in, it's in that Goldilocks range. Thunderbolt is too hot. Voss Pan is too cold. The Avenger Strike Fighter is just the right temperature. It's just, mm, just, just so. Mm, I'm thinking about porridge now. Could really, really nail a nice big bowl of porridge with anyway let's not get into it so what does it have airborne explodes hard to hit supersonic same 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 blizzard skill four plus same it's got strength six it's got toughness six. it's got four three and three plus save so it's got the same durability as the lightning the voss pattern lightning but it comes with two last cannons it comes with a mighty heavy stubber, but most importantly, it comes with the Avenger Bolt Cannon, which has got a range of 36 inches, strength 6, AP-2, 2 damage. It's quite a nice profile. Oh, 
Sorry, what was that? I, I seem to have forgotten the number of shots. Heavy 10! Boom! That is nice! Same rate of fire, same rate of fire. In fact, technically, if you include the heavy stubble, which I am reticent to do, but technically correct, the best kind of correct, technically a higher rate of fire than the Thunderbolt. Uh, so that's quite interesting. Now, bear in mind, young conscript, that the difference between strength 6 and strength 7 in 40k terms is minimal. Because strength 7 will make you slightly, you know, you know, oh, you're slightly better against things like predators. Oh, what's that? No one takes predators. So it doesn't matter. So this thing has heavy 10, strength 6, AP, and it's AP minus 2. So you've got one less strength, but you've got one extra AP. You know what? With all the storm shields that get bandied around these days, I think AP minus 2 is actually super essential. It's why I've been really funny on the auto cannon because i like the auto cannon but the fact it's only ap minus one means that some bozo with a storm shield is still rocking around with his two up or three up save whereas this guy starts strafing some blade guard veterans and they think they're all that with storm shields he's like well you know what let me just remind you that my gun is ap minus two. Oh, you're back on your invulnerable save you jabronies so there you go that's why i am that's why I really like the Adventure Strike Fighter. It's got the high rate of fire. It's got the decent strength. So it's wounding Plague Marines. It's wounding bikes. It's wounding uh, Ravenwing bikes. It's wounding uh, those damn dastardly Dark Elder combat drug Reaver jet bikes. It's wounding them on threes, even if they combat drug up to toughness five. Those Hellions that everyone's talking about. Boom! You're wounding them on on. You're wounding them on the uh, three side. The other ones are wounding on threes. Toughest five. You're wounding all these guys on threes. I was getting toughest five. I think I was saying wounding fives. And I meant to say toughest five. You're wounding everything that's toughest five on threes. If it wasn't clear, I'm correcting it now. Please stop. Don't don't press post. Don't press post in the comment. I've corrected it. So, you're wounding all these guys on threes. And it's two damage. Now, obviously, two damage against Death Guard is, you know, nothing. But it's got the high rate of fire to back it up. So it's like, oh, I have a high rate of fire, like a damage one weapon, but I also have damage two. So when I'm shooting Death Guard, I have the high rate of fire to compensate for their AP for their reduced damage by one. But when I'm shooting things like Reavers and Hellions and other such nasties, I have the strength and the AP to, you know, blow them out of the saddle. So I think it's really, really cool. And don't forget, it still comes with two last cannons. All of these planes come with two last cannons. This still comes with two last cannons, which means it is more than happy just using those last cannons to just snipe out, you know, a heavy intercessor or something like that. These guys are actually really good at killing heavy intercessors. You've got a bunch of heavy intercessors stomping around and think they're all that. Oh, look at me. You know, I'm all gravised up and I'm tough as five and I'm, you know, defining the whole meta and all this kind of stuff. I don't know if they are, to be fair. But they're all stomping around thinking they're all that. You come in with the old Avenger Strike Fighter, give them the old one, two, brap, 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 give them the, give them the beans, load the Heinz 57 beans cannon, and just give them, you know, just, just give them a good old wallop with your heavy 10, strength 6, 8, minus 2, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna do some damage to them. I mean, let's, you know, math hammer it roughly, you should kill like one or two. Ah, uh, they've got three wins each, haven't they? So heavy intercessors are a bit tricky, but you know you uh, you're going to be you know you're going to be strafing in, and you're looking at what t ten shots, five hits, four wounds, two fails. It's like three point five to four wounds, or four wounds. But let's be generous, you know, for once. Always hard, harsh to challenge. Four wounds. They're only going to make if they're lucky. They'll make they'll make two of those four wounds, or two will go through. So you can have you can have intercessor with this strafing with this bad boy. Then you've got your last cards, your heavy stubbers coming in. I would, I'd be surprised if this thing just didn't strafe and kill a couple of heavy incidents every turn. Wouldn't be surprised. And if it kills a couple of heavy incidents every turn, it's after after two turns, it's probably paid its, it's got near to paying its points back. Which is nice. Which is what you want. So it is a really nice, it is a really nice little plane. I mean, it's, it's fantastic for strafing down medium to light targets. I mean, thinking of things like... Um, Hellions, for example, like I said, uh, this is going straight for them. Like it's going to get five five hits again. It's going to get four wounds. Those Hellions, if they're lucky, 
they'll make one. They'll be on a six up invulnerable save. So that's just three dead Hellions, just dead. And they're like 20 points a model. So that's like 60, that's uh, 51 points. So you only have to do that a couple of, two or three turns, and you're making bank. You're looking good. So that's, you know, they're not bad. They're not bad at all. Like, I would say I am gushing a little bit over the planes. You know, I'll admit it. A bit of gushy what gusherson's happening here. But let me caveat that, which is none of these planes are broken or overpowered. Many of these planes are solid, just usable. Okay, they're usable. Um, and out of all of them, I would say the most usable is probably the Avenger Strike Fighter. That's the one that stands out to me as being appropriately pointed for the firepower that it brings and the toughness that it is. Okay, but spamming three of these things or however many you can take, spamming, you know, three of each, um, I don't know. I don't think that they're not hyper competitive, guys. They're not hyper competitive. None of them are. But if you're looking for a unit, if you're, um, you know, you, you see all this stuff about Imperial Guard infantry, you see all this stuff about Imperial Guard armor, maybe you're a guy that likes planes. You know, maybe you've always been more of a flyboy. You know, maybe you're more, more of an air, air pilot, airborne kind of person. And you're less of a waves of infantry and, and, and tanks. You know, maybe you're more of a, ah, I like to play a bit, a bit more of a modern style with my air power, with a bit of infantry calling an air support kind of thing. Okay. In that case, I would say these planes are all perfectly, perfectly okay for you to use as fire support for your airborne infantry. Okay, that's what that's what these things are good for. Are they broken? No. I'm not going to keep repeating myself. Are they broken? No. Are they usable? Yeah. Are some of them more usable than others? Absolutely. I would say it's basically you pay for what you get. Do you want your bronze level, entry level sort of, you know package you want the bronze entry level package go for the Voss pattern lightning i want something that is a flyer that has some anti-tank capability that isn't going to significantly detract from the rest of my army's points okay you go for the Voss pattern lightning are you someone who wants to pay for the best of the best like it's got the best armor it's probably got overall the it's got the strongest firepower strength seven and above from seven strength eight with nine weapons with more wounds and better toughness than the other fighters you want to pay for that gold package you go for the thunderbolt do you want the intermediate level do you want that sil silver package go for the thunderbolt <laughs> just don't, don't go for the thunderbolt go for the avenger strike fighter <laughs> go for the avenger strike fighter it's just the order of the in my phone um so that's how i see it you've got your bronze silver and gold packages and it depends on what you as a player, and especially if you're looking as a as a generic guard player or as an airborne player, it's what do you want to, um, what do you what are you willing to spend on your list to bring that additional sort of firepower? Do you think that the flyers aren't really going to do much? It's going to look cool flying around. Go for the lightning. If you want a brick, a flying brick, then you go for the thunderbolt. If you want a, a jack of all trades, it's got a bit of anti. It's got a Decent rate of firepower, decent damage, decent AP, couple of big old last cannon shots for when things get hairy. You go for the Avenger Strike Fighter to take all comers. And that's that's up to you guys as players. So anyway, we'll leave it there. What do you think? Let me know down in the comment section if you agree or disagree with my analysis. Uh, if anyone has any of these planes, please let me know. You know, real world battlefield experience. I mean, this is theory crafting. We're looking at it. We're sat. We're sort of applying. Uh, what we know, our knowledge to the units, but I haven't gone out and, and played with any of these planes. Is there anyone out there who has, you know, got lots of planes that uses them in games regularly? And is there anything that you can say based on real life experience, which of those three are the most effective? And what about the Marauder Destroyer? Because I'm really interested, or the Marauder Bomber, I'm really interested in that big old beastie. Because that's a Lord of War, that's a plane. So that's pretty cool. Anyway guys, hope you enjoyed this video, let me know what you think, and of course, I'll see you guys next time.